Okay, it's blinking, recording, that's great. So we'll go ahead and get started. Hello all, my name is Carmen. I am Hill Utah's grassroots organizer and welcome back to Hill's video series. Now that we are done with the Utah legislative session and we are all recovering from those quick 45 days, we hope that you had a chance to citizen lobby with us um, and maybe even celebrate International Day of Forests. Which, what is that? What day is that, you ask? Well, Sunday, March 21st was is the United Nations International Day of Forest, which is a day to celebrate and raise awareness of the importance of all types of forests around the world. And this week, we are excited to be joined with a local nonprofit dedicated to trees, Tree Utah's Executive Director, Amy May. She's going to talk to us about the importance of Utah's diverse forests, and uh, how we can help celebrate this day for the next year, really. Amy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and Tree Utah? Hi, thank you so much for having me. And uh, we're just really excited always to be able to share what we do so that others can get involved and help plant trees in their own backyards um, and around the state. Uh, Tree Utah is a statewide nonprofit organization. We um, raise money in order to pay for trees that we get at wholesale rates and then plant trees with individuals around the state um, in parks and open lands, kind of like along the Jordan River here or um, different riparian corridors throughout the state or up in the mountains in the late summer before fall sets in and more snow falls, um, <laughs> small plantings into national forest lands and things like that. And um, we also plant at schools with children. So we do classroom activities, kind of a, an outdoor adventure, kind of in their own schoolyard, planting trees and getting to know the nature right around them uh, a little bit better. So thanks so much for having me. Yeah, thank you so much. And so it seems like Tree Utah doesn't work just local. We expand out of Salt Lake County. And I love that you are connected to the local community and going to schools because trees are important in our schoolyards as well. Um, yeah. We we all appreciate a good tree to climb as a child. So having that nearby. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's nice to be able to educate kids along in the process of planting as well, because then they get an idea that they're not indestructible when they're young. It's, you know, there's a, a fair amount of care that needs to happen. And we develop that with teachers and usually the classes that help us plant are also doing extra watering of the tree. But schoolyards are a really interesting thing because um, if you think about it, they have, you know, not a lot of extra funds to put in trees. Most of the trees planted in schoolyards went in when the school was built. And um, it takes some effort to really like, you know, we come in, we bring the trees, we educate the kids and work with teachers and librarians and everybody who wants to get involved. And it's just a great place because they have irrigation existing. Most of it is just watering grass. If we can plant more trees strategically around the school, we can help with their cooling costs. We can help with um, creating different play spaces and mm -hmm. shade and cooling is so important in so many of our neighborhoods. And so um, that's a really great initiative I'm excited about always so I love that and learning about that at a young age and through a thorough system I really appreciate that about tree Utah's it's not just planting trees and leaving and hoping they survive it's really educating the community that know these trees help you and that we're all connected and that having more trees um so Amy with all of the education systems and like the real thorough education you go through from top to bottom what do you hope that the community learns from your organization to not just plant a tree, but why plant a tree? Like what is the purpose of Tree Utah? We want to educate people to come away from all of our events, which are usually in parks and open lands and public spaces, to be able to leave and care for the trees in their own backyard in a better fashion and plant more trees in their own yards and understand where the locations are that might work and where they might not work. Mm -hmm. um, we have trained staff and team leaders all working together to, um, at the same time, we're planting with groups of people, trying to make sure that everybody understands a little bit better why we selected the trees we did, why they're being planted in the locations they are. Every tree is a little different. And of course there's myriad benefits to trees and it's a little different in every place, but we always try to make sure everyone comes away with a little more education about 
how they can go forward and select trees that are you know healthy and successful and um and just you know be adding to the trees in our neighborhoods and communities you really um it's important to get to a certain percentage of trees in any given neighborhood and it's um just essential that we're doing it in parks and schools and open lands but also people in their own yards and understanding the benefits of them and, and coming to our plantings can help, I think, enable people to really um, feel like they can be successful themselves. So. Absolutely. And you mentioned like there's so many different trees. We all recognize that so many different trees and you can't just plant one thinking it'll be the same care as another. Each one provides different benefits to what you're looking for. You know, we need you know, strong, sturdy trees along the rivers to make sure that they don't flood and to make sure there's no overflowing and that they hold strong. But maybe we need fruit trees to, you know, help feed neighborhoods and to encourage depopulations. And, you know, the theme for 2021's International Day of Forests through the UN is forest restoration, a path to recovery and well-being. And I think we're all kind of looking for that path this year um, in both you know, economically, personally, community wise, we're all looking to recover a little bit for our well being. And, you know, we are asking you as an individual to undertake local efforts to plant trees, nourish the trees, and maybe just spend some time loving on the trees along your path. So, Amy, let's talk about that here in Utah. We do have diverse trees. And, you know, I was thinking about this today. When I think of forests, I think of two different types of forests because we live in Utah. So we have our beautiful timber line. Um, I got to experience skiing for the first time and seeing that at a whole different level. And it was beautiful, but then you can drive south and be in this beautiful juniper and pinion forests that are just as unique as an, and important and secretly have little forests growing on the ground called biocrust. Mm -hmm. So there's forests all around us and people don't recognize that those forests are susceptible to not only logging and industries and things like that, but also just to, you know, bad human care. And those trees are important to us no matter what. So mm -hmm. Amy, why do you think forests are important to our well-being and to the earth? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, there's um, just myriad ways and I'll say as I as you were just speaking I'll say there's kind of a third type of forest in Utah that we're really conscious of and that's the urban forest and it really is another important element um, of the whole picture um, all of these forests are helping to clean our air and filter water with the roots and they're sequestering carbon dioxide and they're providing habitat um, it is it's just it, the list goes on and on and on in terms of all of the benefits that trees provide and it's just you know not to mention they're so beautiful <laughs> right, right i mean and um adding to the diversity of that and the more that we have especially looking at potential climate change coming and and increases in temperature and things like that uh, the more genetic diversity there is, the more places that we have trees going into potential climate change is it really will help to just like, just, you know, have the, the trees fare better overall and have forests maintain themselves over time. Amy, why are Utah's forests important? And I love that you mentioned our urban forests because people don't think of you know, there being a forest or a necessity for trees in our green, in our urban life. So let's talk about that, especially after our windstorm last year that, you know, knocked out trees that were hundreds of years old. Yeah. So why are forests important in Utah? I mean, all the reasons that we've discussed and really, especially in our valleys, you know, we have really modified the natural environment here in Utah's valleys. And if you can plant trees into them, it helps to create spaces that are beneficial for humans. Everything is paved and so it's hotter and it uh, doesn't absorb so much water and it doesn't sequester as much carbon. And it's really like, we have really, really modified and altered the environment so much, especially for our urban forests that trees really are one of the things that are 
least expensive ways to kind of mitigate that damage for lack of a better word that we just you know our infrastructure just kind of creates and so the more that we can focus on that and um you, you can feel the difference between a street where you've got 100 year old ash trees lining the street and you know all the homes around it benefit in so many ways um everyone knows those are streets worth paying a little more for and um you know, we have lots of streets on the west side of Salt Lake City, for instance, um, that, you know, there just hasn't been a big push for trees um, until now. And so you really feel that difference and uh, you can feel the benefit of the forest and the lack of the forest very easily by just driving two miles, essentially. Um, so. Yeah, and I mean, we all look for the shade from a really big tree in the middle of the summer and not some dainty tree. You know, more <laughs> trees and more green space in general means more carbon dioxide and other harmful pollutants that are in our air, like nitrogen oxide, ammonia, sulfur dioxide, and ozone are sucked out of the air into the tree that it uses for food and exchange releases, you know, that sweet oxygen that we need. But mm -hmm. less forest, like you're mentioning, even in an urban setting, that means less carbons removed from the air you breathe, which means the dirtier your air is. Um, I had our intern Abby check today and the world's forests sequester, sequester an estimated 7.6 billion metric tons of CO2 per year, which is only about 1.5 times more carbon than the US admits. So we're barely the forests are barely covering the united states and maybe south america and then all the other carbon is just continuing to be released building up mm -hmm. right exactly yeah and, and go ahead the, the heat mitigation as well is really really important you know one mature tree the usda did some kind of measurement and uh this is one of their stats but uh, one mature tree, and I think they were looking at a maple for this one, it was um, equivalent to running 20 room size air conditioners every day. And so <laughs> really, I mean, that's, that's enormous. And, you know, we're doing as much to, as possible to just plant trees and plant trees, but they are young, and it will take time for them to mature. Like the, the, I think it's a Chinese proverb, um, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago, and the second best time is now. And really that is what creates kind of this manic push for me to make as many tree plantings uh, throughout the state with groups as possible this time of year. We're just gonna fit in as many as we possibly can all through April and May and every time of the year where it's you know beneficial for trees to go in the ground, we're planting with groups and it's, um, it's just so important, so. Absolutely. And you're right. Trees provide that shade, lowers low, uh, lowers your surrounding temperatures and the 20 air conditioners all day. Just think about their reliance on fossil fuels and running electricity for that. Whereas you can strategically plant some trees by your windows and you will have an enormous difference. And, you know, it also takes caring for those trees. That's, that's mm -hmm. really a big thing. If you want to have healthy trees and want to benefit from the shade and have healthy fruit you can eat, then you need to be able to take care of the dirt and the soil around it and, you know, nourish your tree, talk to your tree, tell it it's doing great things for you because it is. And I love that Tree Utah is so committed to putting so many trees in the ground as much as possible um, because you know, that's what we need. You can't just plant one at a time, but having a big group go and plant a bunch of trees makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with all these fantastic benefits of trees, we're seeing Salt Lake and a lot of people recognize this. Um, it does take, like you said, the proverb, you know, 20 years ago is great. Now is second best because we have to replace what we're losing. Um, I know Mayor Mendenhall has committed to planting trees throughout Salt Lake and even an additional thousand trees each year on the west side of Salt Lake City, which is one of the key areas that we really need to recognize that needs green space, not even just trees, just overall green space. So Amy, what can we as individuals do to help build a forest or build that pathway to a recovery in Salt Lake City and on the west side, whether that's donating, planting trees, finding your own, what can we do? Absolutely. Uh, this spring, like I said, we'll have lots of opportunities to have volunteers engaged with 
what we're, we're doing. And our events are all very COVID safe, I'll say as well. We're currently all wearing masks throughout the duration of the event. We have sanitation stations and encourage people to bring their own tools. If you don't have it, we have extra tools and we sanitize everything completely as well. And, um, and we're spreading things out as well, a little more than we would otherwise and keeping events a little smaller than we would otherwise. But um, we'd love to engage groups from different organizations and individuals. And if you want to check out more information, you can go to treeutah.org on the web and treeutah.org slash events will take you right to our events page. And as we have signups available for different events coming up this spring, you'll be able to see them there and sign a waiver and like get details. Um, give us your email address on the waiver. And that may, means if there's any change of, you know, mm -hmm. due to weather or anything like that, we'll text you or email you with, yeah. with the current information. So there's tons of events going on and you can just join in and kind of test it out and see, you don't have to have special knowledge or information. You don't have to be super strong. We make our events as inclusive as we can possibly make them. Um, if you have special needs, uh, call us in advance and let us know. I have definitely put aside trees in special locations for people who have limited mobility and different things like that. So really whatever it is, um, we are happy to help engage people and get out and plant trees together. Um, and most of our events are very kid friendly as well, unless we're on a cliffside somewhere, essentially, um, you're welcome to bring your children. That's how I started volunteering with Tree Utah. I think in 2002 <laughs> with my son. And so um, it's just, you know, we pride ourselves on being a really inclusive organization that way. And um, we're always working to make it even more so. Um, and you're welcome if you don't want to come get your hands dirty or if you're like, I am not, I had a friend recently who was like, you just want to sit one of my plantings. And they said, you know, it's really, I planted a tree once, it was torture. <laughs> And I, was, I just was like, I went into fight mode, like, no, it's not. <laughs> overreacting. It's just because you were a kid when you did that and you were a negative. But um, anyway, I think it's a ton of fun. And if you don't think it sounds like fun or you can't for some reason or you don't have time, we work as matchmakers essentially to match up funding with places that need trees and groups of people who want to come out and plant trees. So however you can fit into that metric, you're welcome to. And every dollar that we receive from individuals in the community goes straight to paying for trees to get out into the, the ground around us. Um, and so really it's, you know, any way that you want to get involved is great. We work with students as well who have to do internships or service learning projects. Um, However, people really want to, to help out, I try to find the right place to plug them in and, and make it happen. So. And you know, it's so fantastic that it is so inclusive because I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, how great is it to be taught by people who've learned about the tree and through the whole process to know that you're not just gonna pick the wrong tree, stick it in the ground and it die, which would be horrible. So you're in good safe hands tree utah's definitely planted a lot of the wonderful trees um the new ones that have been around salt lake city and on cliff edges and throughout national parks like how exciting is that that you can help reforest some of utah's national parks that's so exciting yeah and we work statewide um you can find information about those events uh, elsewhere and you know if you're listening in from somewhere else in Utah we have programs where we come out to um, different locations and help support groups of, of people in other places who want to get trees planted in their city parks and things like that. I should apologize this while my dog started snoring really loud and so <laughs> It's not, it's not a monster, it's just you know. We love it. We love all the dogs here at Heal <laughs> and they are part of, they're part of the process too. Dogs love to be under trees. Trees are good for dogs. My dog loves to stare at his favorite tree because there's always squirrels in it. So that's, mm, that's part yeah. of our life, right? Well, Amy, what kind of trees would you recommend for Salt Lake specifically Utahns to plant or to look to planting once they received all the awesome training and education you all have? If they feel the need, what kind of trees would you recommend here in Salt Lake? Oh my gosh, there are so many. And really it's, um, there's a propensity for people to see a type of tree and plant all the same. And I will guard against planting all the same types of trees because then you lend yourself to pests and diseases and things can kind of sweep through. Um, for instance, the ash trees that I referenced earlier, 
there is an emerald ash borer that is coming across the United States. And so it's, there's monitor stations all through the city. We're part of that monitoring project because they're in Colorado now. Mm. Potentially we could lose a lot of ash trees all at once. And so um, there's, there's a caution I wanna say against, um, you know, too much of the same. And if I say, you know, I hesitate to say just a few things. I'll say one of the trees I'm really fascinated by that there aren't very many of right now are filberts. There's Turkish filberts that do really well here and they're drought tolerant. And they actually, if there's enough of them in any given neighborhood, they actually sometimes um, get, you know, fruit and nuts. nuts. Oh my goodness. Um, <laughs> and um, there are, there's so many great nurseries to go and talk to and check out. And it really also, you know, it depends on, I would, I'd say if you're looking for trees, there's a lot of great resources online and you can look on our website at treeutah.org. We do have tree lists of recommended trees. Um, and you're welcome to call us or come to one of our events and pick any of our brains about what we think. But you're gonna wanna pick a different tree. Um, you know, if you want to plant something on the south side of your house to block some of the um, strongest heat, perhaps in July, um, I would recommend a deciduous large tree and you know not something that's an evergreen because then it'll also block your south light and warmth in the winter right mm -hmm. so there's just different ways to kind of think about it and um i'm always a fan of planting fruit trees wherever and whenever you can i just love the fruit trees around me i love to share the fruit with my neighbors and friends um to me, there's, just, you know, in an urban environment, especially, there just can't be enough, really. Uh, and especially once it really comes to fruition, it's like you're competing with the squirrels and with birds, and <laughs> all kinds of other things for it as well. It's, you know, kind of like a bountiful thing. Um, and uh, so we have a little, um, actually, Trita has a small demonstration permaculture orchard at the Day Riverside Library. Yeah, and it's in Rose Park. Um, the library is, at, I think, 10th North and about 17th West, really close to Redwood and 10th North. And um, we're right behind. And it's a, a, you know, permaculture is sort of permanent agriculture. And you can look that up and find out more. But we do volunteer groups. And we have a bunch of fruit trees and perennial herbs and plants that grow around them in kind of a natural setting. Um, and then the, the neighbors and volunteers who come to our events harvest the fruits. So that's a, a way to learn about kind of what's going on um, there. And on Tuesday, actually, um, okay. tomorrow, it'll be a, um, a pruning workshop there. So if people are interested, they can go at 4 p.m. and check that out. So, um, Perfect. Well, that leads into my next question. Is that basic tree care? I know you guys have fantastic videos on YouTube and resources on your websites. And I just wanna make a ploy out to all those listening is definitely attend these awesome events and watch these videos because it is so important to take care of your trees, especially when they're young, especially when they're dormant to really yield a bountiful harvest or a big, beautiful tree. You don't want your trees to cut themselves off, limit their limbs, limit their growth. You really wanna take care of your trees to make sure they do grow big and strong um so i'll say to that too really the first six months of care that you can give your tree is the the most 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 important in terms of like watering extra water especially all through july um watching out to see you know if there are issues or problems that arise if the tree tips or moves because it's not rooted and established quite yet like re-centering it and just positioning it correctly um, making sure it's not planted too deep is always a big yeah. thing um, most trees are, are planted too deep you don't want soil piled up around the trunk of your tree at all it can really uh, actually smother your tree and create serious issues and lots of times it'll be fine for the first couple of years and then just fail and if you've had that happen it, it was probably planted too deep um so anyway there's just a, you know you want to really kind of like if you get a 
I guess, you know, when you have a new pet or something, it's like you really have to take some time and establish the relationship and getting your tree established properly will really, really make all the difference in terms of its long-term survival as well. So. Right. Which just betters your relationship with your tree and your plant. I have a tomato mm -hmm. plant. This is my tomato plant that I started this past summer on my balcony That's, from I from Tree Utah, which is fantastic. And I brought <laughs> him in and was like, let's see if he survives. And I come to find out some tomato plants can live three years. And mm -hmm. so, you know, why not plant your own Christmas tree or plant mm -hmm. a tree in your neighborhood and have a couple of years of some love and care but to build a relationship and especially with fruit trees, that's probably one of my earliest memories is climbing an apple tree and finding the best apple because they always taste better. We all recognize that. <laughs> we didn't climb for it. <laughs> we've all climbed for it. We've all probably fallen for one or bit into one that had a worm, but it was still the best apple ever. And it didn't turn you off because trees are there. They're healing. They're a path to recovery. And we need to take care of them too if they if we want them to take care of us as well we can't just stick them in the ground at any level and hope that they survive we have to care for them just like they try to care for for us that's right so that's right i am so glad that tree utah exists and i'm always sending volunteers out there um to help with any volunteer opportunities you all have because this is an important issue and we all recognize that there's less trees in our lives and especially so, after that storm in last September as well, we lost throughout Salt Lake City and Salt Lake County, I think around right around 5,000 trees. 5,000 trees from one storm, one storm. And at this rate, how many trees do you think might get planted this year? I am hoping it's an audacious goal, but we're hoping to plant 20,000 trees this year. See, how incredible is that? We need to keep up with that. And this is how this is how we want you to get involved with us supporters watching. Um, check us out. Check out heal, not healutah.org, but treeutah.org. Um, but also check out healutah.org because we are hoping to do some awesome projects with some organizations, including Tree Utah, to do some tree planting. Because if we want clean air, we're going to commit to doing everything we can to get our air clean. Amy, before we sign off for the day and go spend some time outside in the sun, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Um, your favorite tree um, or your least favorite tree? <laughs> <laughs> I have never been asked that one. I don't know that I have a least favorite tree. I, I'm even fond of the elm trees that many people might claim are their least favorite trees. Um, you can eat the Samaras coming up here in just a couple of weeks. We'll have, you can eat them like salad. I don't know if people know that. Um, <laughs> so I know that they can be problematic and so can lots of people. <laughs> but <Right. laughs> um, my favorite, favorite, favorite tree is uh, cottonwood that I've been watching grow for the last 20 years. And um, it's, I just, I adore it. And it's probably one of the greatest things of having to work from home for the most part over the last year is getting to just real like work, take my laptop out and work under that tree and really just have like a, I don't know, it feels like a coworker at this point. Um, even this time of year, it doesn't have leaves quite yet, but it's just got such a great presence and it's, mm -hmm. it's just fantastic. So I, I love that. I love that. I have one that's outside my window that has lots of, or at least one squirrel nest and a few little bird nests. So I, I like seeing them go mm -hmm. in and out as much as I can. Yeah. I think we all have a special tree in our life or can think of one somewhere on our adventures in our neighborhoods. And, you know, those trees probably need some love. Go, go give them some love and, you know, they're mm -hmm. breathing cleaner air because of them. So, yeah. We just want to encourage everyone to plant some trees this year. Check out Tree Utah. Amy, anything else? If you have a group of people that wants to volunteer or if you want to sponsor a tree planting with us, um, we have planting availability happening all through the rest of this year. We'll be able to plant in different places um, from the valleys like in April, May and into June and then up into the mountains and riparian areas throughout the summer and then back down into valleys in September, October, November, even into December if it's as mild as it was this year. And we're just happy to work with anybody that wants to get involved. So. I love it. And the one last thing that I remember that I can't wait to join is you all host um, 
snowshoeing or skiing with an arborist during the winter. So if you maybe don't want to get your hands dirty or maybe ready to go learn some more and you're already outside, um, I've seen those and they look fantastic. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, we do tree identification and tree talks at different resorts and um, Wasatch Mountain State Park is a great partner. You can see all of those events at treeutah.org slash events or always on our Facebook page as well, which is just facebook.com slash treeutah. Perfect. Perfect. I'm so excited. I love it. And we just want to say, go plant a tree, go nourish a tree during this time. And thank you all for watching. Check out treeutah.org and healutah.org for our upcoming events. Um, everyone have a great rest of your day. We'll see you later. Thanks so much, Amy. Thanks.